I just go ahead and stone cone stunner the whole Marvel Universe starting with Spider-Man, Spider-Man swinging from what spiders can except he was the best goddamn thing in the whole goddamn movie so stone cold the stone cold nerd man might have to leave the Spider-Man alone but apart from that this is about to go down as we take on the entire critical community including those in Rotten Tomatoes who've been talking trash for way too long. So, one of the uh, top 10 reasons um, that people say, and remember, if I think that the, one of the criticisms, you know, I'm talking about the criticisms you'd have um, from the fans, the fan backlash, the stuff you got from the critics on, um, on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, uh, as you know, I'll put up quotes from the critics. I do apologize. <clears throat> I'm going to put up quotes from the critics as we go along so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, uh, you'll see it on the screen. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do the graphic as I'm recording right now. I'm going to I'm going to challenge these top ten crit criticisms and uh, that that you find in a lot of the reviews for Batman v Superman, and also along the way show what, how how is Civil War any different? You know, no, where I can. Um, it unfortunately Civil War, broadly speaking. Is so forgettable to me because it's so. Much. If it, if it was the first Marvel movie I'd ever seen, then I might have more time for it. But now I'm saying that it's getting a little generic now. I like what Marvel do. I like that 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 it's making kids happy. You know, it's always good to make kids happy. But uh, it, it it it's just not my uh, like. I'm entertained by other things. I like that as a light-hearted thing, you know, and I'll go to um, any Marvel movie that comes along, but, uh, you know, I like something a bit uh, a bit more heavy-hitting, and I think that's what Batman v Superman and uh, Suicide Squad were. We're going to uh, start uh, by trying to understand the low score. I, I, and this is the last thing I'll say before I carry on. Um, with Batman v Superman, other, unlike with Suicide Squad, I kind of tr understood a little bit more of the criticism towards it. Um, I understood a little bit more why a lot of people didn't understand it. I wish people would have given it another chance and gone to watch it again, because I think there was a lot there that they may have missed. I thought the reviews were nitpicking rather than actually critically engaging what the film was trying to be so yeah let me let's hopefully we'll bring out all of that um first we're we're going to talk about the um uh, the editing in the movie uh the editing for the movie made it difficult to understand uh and was too long and the movie was too long. Now, I'm going to take each of those points on one by one. So the editing makes the movie difficult to understand. Now, I understood this within the um, theatrical um, version of the movie, uh, the, 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 uh, the theatrical kind of release of the movie. However, as I was watching the movie, what I realized is um, though the editing... You know, and especially when you see, um, when you see the uh, the the uh, extended version, um, the the director's cut, you realise well, okay, it's not just the editing; it's that they really cut out significant bits of the movie that would have helped the audience understand. But to me, I was able to fill in the gaps when I watched the theatrical version, so I did understand the critical reception. But I still felt people were nitpicking. I mean, I, I remember people were saying when the film came out, they didn't understand the whole... Oh, by the way, spoilers 
massive, massive spoilers. So that this is going to be a, a, if you haven't seen Batman v Superman, I, I don't understand because you're on a comic book movie. I, I'm sure you've watched them um, or you've seen the movie by now. But if you haven't seen it, there's huge spoilers in this. Um, so uh, in the desert scene, um, in the theatrical version, you didn't find out that the bodies of the terrorists in the beginning were burnt um, by um, uh, by the the, the, the kind of um, Russian uh, you know the Russian henchmen of Lex Luthor, and so people didn't understand why everyone thought Superman was responsible for killing those people in the desert. Okay, so essentially. Um, you know, it, it, it skipped that it, uh, that very very important part um, where the the uh, KG Beast, that's his name, who was the henchman of um, Lex Luthor, uh, where he had burnt the bodies, and all we saw is that these um, terrorists had been shot by Lex Luthor's henchmen, and therefore people didn't understand why did they think Superman was responsible. Uh, for the uh, for the death or uh, for the deaths of these terrorists and they were like you know it doesn't make sense but to me it was like easy you fill in the gap I, I always I almost knew that these bodies had been burnt even by watching the theatrical version and even if they hadn't it was just it was obvious that in some way the the, the government just assumed Superman was there he must have been responsible he must be somehow responsible for, for the tragedy that unfolded and the killing of all these terrorists who had kidnapped Lois Lane. I think that's all you really needed to understand. You know, I didn't think there was any big thing. So when it came to the editing of the movie, I really got how, um, you know, people had a problem with it. I didn't understand why they had so much of a problem because I didn't feel it was so bad that the, the, I, I, I was lost out, outside of the movie. It, did, it wasn't so jarring. You still could follow the general gist of the story. And especially, I mean, I think especially for me, as someone who, you know, uh, knows how difficult it is to um, get a lot of things into a, a very, you know, like a screenplay is what, like, um, uh, you, you have a uh, hundred and something pages and, and you know, you've, you've got a short time and then you've got to edit it down, especially like the Hollywood movies and the demands they make on you for the time constraints you have um, within which to be able to tell stories that possibly need more time to be told. Um, you know, they need, uh, you know, you probably need four hours to tell a really, really excellent Batman v Superman story. Um, and so I got where the critics were coming from with the editing. But one thing I did enjoy about the editing, because they said it kept going from place to place to place to place. And one thing I thought that was really good about it was that if you if you saw the way it unfolded and the way the story unfolded, even in the theatrical version, more so in the um, director's cut of it, it really was like a graphic novel, a DC graphic novel coming to life. And I'd never seen that before cinematically. I really had not seen that before cinematically. Um, uh, even, in, even in The Dark Knight, it was still, it still was adapting, uh, it, it was close, but it was adapting material from a film, um, from, from a, a comic book and, 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 and translating it into film language. I felt like almost what Zack Snyder was doing was literally taking the pages of um, his own Elseworld story of uh, you know uh, of uh, of of um, the DC characters and uh, if for any of those who don't know what an Elseworld is, uh, an Elseworld um, in DC comics is kind of like a what if in Marvel comics, 
and essentially what that is is where you take um, the characters, the uh, the normal DC characters like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but you slightly change the reality that they live in, um, so you can tell these kind of strange, uh, you know, stories, alternate world stories of um, how things might be if they were inhabiting a slightly different and alternate uh, alternate universal world. And I felt like that was what he was taking, you know, like the the most famous one is the uh, Elseworld, um, is is the film that this, uh, the, the, the graphic novel that this film is based on, which is um, The Dark Knight Returns um, by Frank Miller. So that's what an Elseworld comic is for, or, or a graphic novel is for anybody who doesn't know or isn't familiar with it. And Zack Snyder really managed to capture that and I felt the editing almost lent itself to that um, that kind of storytelling that you do find in comic books where it's like, you know, you go from one page to another page and it, it just keeps going back in this kind of crescendo, going from one story to another story to, you know, from Wonder Woman's little patch of the story to Batman's little patch of the story and, and bringing all these story elements together until finally they connect into one, you know. Um, and then y y you had the final kind of payoff at the end. So to me, it was a, an incredibly um, effective way of bringing the feel of graphic novels to life in uh, cinematically. But I could understand from the point of a film critic and from the point of the general audience, um, who, and the general audience mainly enjoyed this film, by the way, but, but from the point of the general audience, that they might not have understood that if they'd never read a graphic novel. And I... I uh, so I understand the editing critique of Batman v Superman, but I also think one has to appreciate that in fact what Zack Snyder was trying to do, he was writing a love letter to, to um, the DC graphic novels that were kind of dark and a kind of um, very epic in scale. And that was what it was trying to do and I think it did it quite effectively. And the editing lent itself well to that form of storytelling, which isn't the usual kind of um, editing that you'd have in a movie that was supposed to be, you know, uh, to, to, to run like how we expect a movie format to run. Um, the critics say it's too long. I think it was too long. I, I agree with them wholeheartedly. I think this film is flawed. I think it's, it's a flawed, fascinating movie. Um, and you're going to hear me say that the flaws are very, they're very, very um, noticeable. But at the same time, I think one has to appreciate what the film was trying to do. And most of what it was trying to do, it did quite successfully, I have to say. But even where it failed, you have to appreciate what it was trying to do, um, which was something that I don't think has been seen cinematically before um, this time. And I think it was a really, really um, brave, a brave approach to a Hollywood blockbuster, especially. Um, so it was too long, definitely too long. Uh, and this is why when people say, oh, you should have just released the, 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 the um, director's cut in the cinemas, I don't think that would have helped. I think that would have worked, made things worse if they had have released the director's cut in the cinemas. Um, I think people would have been very just, you know, the, the, I, I, loved, I loved the film. I really, really loved the film. I was entertained from um, every bit I watched. And the first one thing, I'm just going to tell you a quick story. Um, the, when I went to the cinema to watch the movie, 
I, uh, the first time I went, I fell asleep. Sorry, uh, the first time I went, um, I went, I got in after the trailers and I watched it and I was sitting there thinking, oh my God, this is a just, you know, because I, I was, I was out there with knives drawn, wait, waiting to, to, uh, to throw the fire on, um, Zack Snyder as well, because I was just like, I, I hate you after what you did with Man of Steel, what you did to Superman. Uh, and all the critics are saying this is terrible, and I know this is terrible. This is you've done it again, you've you've done it again. And I'm sitting there watching this movie with a friend of mine, and I'm just saying, like looking at him, and I'm like, and he doesn't even like comic book movies. This guy didn't even like comic book movies at all. He he he, he hates them, uh, or not hates them. He just is really really indifferent to them. I'm sitting there like. When is this film going to get bad? I'm looking at him like, when is this film going to get bad? And he's looking at me and said, is, this is supposed to be a bad movie? And, uh, it's like, and he's like, no, I, I'm, I think it's all right. Uh, and we watched it to the end and both of us came out of the cinema and he was like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really like it, but I don't like comic book movies in general. But as it goes, I don't see it as a bad movie. I thought it was, you know, entertaining for what it was. I just don't, I'm not interested in the subject matter. And I was like, wow, that's an excellent comic book movie. That's one of the best comic book movies I've ever seen. I can't believe Zack Snyder made a movie I like outside of Watchmen. I, I and I thought, you know, the only reason he made Watchmen good is because he, he basically just ripped it straight from the comic. Uh, and I like the comic, so I like the film. Um, and the visuals were amazing. So I, I, I didn't understand what people's problem was. And then I went to watch it a second time. And this time I went to watch it with, with the trailers from the beginning. And I was still enjoying it, enjoying the film. But by the end of it, Last 20 minutes, my, probably one of my favorite bits, when the Trinity are fighting together, I'd fallen asleep. And I, I, I was enjoying it, and I'd fallen asleep. It was too goddamn long. It was too goddamn long. Uh, and I think if they really, really wanted to do it, I don't know how they could have done this, but if they wanted to release like the three-hour version of it, I think they should have just done it two parts. You know, I can't think of any other way they could have released that three-hour version. Just done it in two parts, you know, and um, and and leave it at that because I thought the the three-hour version, the the director's cut. I love it. I love it. I love it. Every moment of it, I watch it. I love it. But usually, I have to watch it in two parts because I get a little bit tired watching the movie. And that's the honest truth, even to the Batman v Superman fans. That's my honesty. I told you I'm going to shoot from the hip. I'm going to be real in this video and I'm being real. So that's the editing. Okay. There were problems with it. Okay. But this is why I'm going to explain why this movie isn't 27%. Okay. It's not a bad movie and it's better than... Um, uh, than Civil War. See, the thing is, I fall asleep with Civil War and I'm not even enjoying the movie. That's the difference. Uh, long, long movie. I think about the same runtime. This film has no humour and it's too dark, not enough, not enough action. Well, Kurt Russell, what do you have to say about that? Exactly. Okay, so, uh, to be honest, right, like, um, the no humor, too dark, and not enough action. This this one really angered me because it. If you're going to be critical of a film, 
I'm not going to go into Schindler's List. This film never tried, this film never suggested it's going to be light and humorous and funny. There was nothing in the, I mean, apart from when they started making them feel fear that if they didn't have a little bit of humor um, peppered in here and there, that, um, that uh, you know, people weren't going to respond well to the trailers and not come to the movie. Um, so they, they put in a couple of jokes which were bad and shouldn't have probably been in the film because they were distracting. And I think actually Lex Luthor brought enough um, humour to the movie anyway. But anyway, forget about that. But this angered me because I don't go to a film like Schindler's List and start saying, well, you know, I don't like that movie because it's too dark and it's too realistic and it's got no humour. The reason I don't do that is because Schindler's List didn't say that it was supposed to be uh, light-hearted. It never, um, you know, presented itself as to be something full of humour. So why would you critic? Why would you be critical of a movie for not being having a light enough um, uh, tone to it? As a critic, it doesn't make any sense. You criticise a movie for what it's trying to be and show how, through what it's trying to be, it fails. You don't criticise a movie for what you, as an audience member, or you, as a, um, you know, as a film critic, want it to be. And as for not enough action, the action in this movie is far superior to Civil War. The action in Civil War is so cartoonish, so over the top, um, you know, uh, uh, just ridiculously um, moronic, and yet has no stakes, you know, no one dies, no one, um, you know, not that I'm saying anyone should die, I'm just saying, like, I'm comparing the way the action works. You know, the, 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 the action in Batman v Superman makes sense, it's grounded, and it's and it's brutal. There's not one action scene in um, uh, the uh, uh, in Civil War that has a. It, it, I'm sorry, you can say that big action scene with Ant Man, and I loved when Ant Man grew big as well, and I loved when seeing Spider Man get in the mix with you know Captain America and all those guys. But um, you know. Uh, there's not one action scene that can hold a candle to that Batman scene in the in the warehouse, and everyone knows it. Everyone knows it, right? There's no action scene that can hold a candle to the Batman, um, uh, you know, in the Bat in the Batmobile, just mowing through cats, uh, driving through um, boats, just amazing, amazing action. Amazing, incredible action. And what I appreciate about the, 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 the distinction between the action, and I'm not saying I did not enjoy the action in Civil War. Do not get me wrong with what I'm saying. I'm saying the action in, um, in, in, in uh, Batman v Superman is more sophisticated, it's more intelligent, it's more visceral, and therefore I enjoy it more. The action for me in The Dark Knight is better than... Um, civil war, you know, um, it's not. It's it's more stylized in 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 Batman v Superman, and yet at the same time more grounded. Look at how Batman faces Doomsday in the movie. Look at the difference between how Batman um, has to uh, has to uh, respond to Doomsday to the threat of doomsday in comparison with how, uh, you know, um, the Avengers in the, uh, sorry, in, in, in Captain, um, um, Captain America Civil War, they respond to each other. Like, everyone can somehow take on everyone, you know, it, it, it's just completely ridiculous. Like, you've got humans, like human level characters, like Hawkeye, um, and that, that dumb bird 
character. I don't know what his name is. Anthony Mackie. Um, you've got, um, uh, you know, someone like even Ant-Man who's kind of strangely, I don't know why his power of getting small is so effective. Um, you know, or, or, or Black Widow is the one that pisses me off the most. I mean, this is a human woman, okay? And I'm, this is nothing against women. Obviously, you can be very tough, and if you're trained well enough, um, you could take down uh, most any man. But, like, you know, when these characters start going up against Vision, you know, doing shit against um, a, 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 essentially a being who is on the same level as Superman, and these guys can fight them somehow. How? You know, when she's going up against the Chitari, an alien um, force um, that, 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 that is from space and somehow, that, you know, taking shots at Loki. You know, it's all of this stuff, all of this cartoonish things where I know what it is. I know exactly what it is. It's like... The actors are like, oh, in my contract, I want my character to be cool, you know, uh, because that's going to help my film career. You know, it's the same thing as with the guy who played Hawkeye, who's one of the most boring characters in comic book history, and in the films is one of the most boring characters. And he's like, oh, I want more time. I should be given more lines. I want more lines of these jokes so that my character can develop, because that's what character development is, um, you know, saying, you know, funny jokes, you know, having little lines of dialogue, that little zingers or whatever. That's to them what character development is. So um, he says, uh, you know, I, you know, like, um, uh, he, I'm, I'm sure this is why that all, all of them are, are so spectacular in their action scenes, no matter what. Um, they say, oh, you know, I want to be able to, you know, we all have to be able to take shots at each other no matter what kind of power level we are. You know, it's like um, somehow uh, Black Widow can take on, you know, Iron Man somehow. I don't know how, but she can do it, you know, or Spider-Man. Uh, it, it or, or, or Paul Rudd can, you know, Ant-Man can um, hang with Spider-Man, even though Spider-Man's, you know, got all kinds of powers that shouldn't allow that to happen. It's too cartoonish and unrealistic, and also there's no stakes. They're not even... It, essentially, it's a sparring match. They're not even trying to hurt each other. The whole thing is absolutely absurd. And then they're... The, 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 you know, these guys come in, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to go into this more in the Civil War um, uh, 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 part of where, where I go into why I think uh, the 10 reasons I think Civil War is not as good a movie. It's completely overrated, completely overzealous the way the, um, the, the critics are pouring on accolades to this movie. So... They're going on about this accord that they have where the government are concerned about um, them, uh, you know, the way they're using their powers and how they're irresponsible with using their powers. And basically, in this half hour long, I don't know how long it is, 26 minutes or something like that, sparring match that these um, super-powered beings have with each other, they just destroy a whole airport somewhere in the world. They just destroy a whole airport in a sparring match. They're not even trying to hurt each other. They're not facing a bad guy even. You know, as much as I hate the Man of Steel, at least Superman, when he was just destroying public property and killing um, people in the process, but, you know, was actually trying to save the world from, from a villain. These guys are just fighting each other. They don't think, maybe we shouldn't throw a plane at the other person because somebody built that plane and it's not our property to destroy. They all should have been arrested for vandalism. It's essentially, they all committed criminal acts. They just took buses and whatever it was and threw it at each other. Now, am I saying they shouldn't have had a fight in an airport and maybe if one of them got thrown in to uh, a car or something like that, that's absolutely fine. 
there was nobody in there in the airport as far as I know. I don't know why there was nobody in the airport, but that, that's absolutely fine if they got thrown in. But they're literally taking stuff and throwing it and, and purposely destroying public or private property. After they've just been told by the government, and, and, and Tony uh, Stark is championing this idea that they should be uh, that they should have some kind of limitations or restrictions on what they do, and they're just going around destroying. And it's not like it's the Captain America side that's doing it; it's it's the Tony Stark side that's doing it. They're just going around just destroying something that isn't theirs. So anyway, it's all cartoonish, ridiculous, the logic is completely off, it makes no sense. And if you want to nitpick, you can see how I just nitpicked, because I could have just sat there during Civil War and been thinking about all these things, rather than sit down and just try and enjoy the bloody movie, which is what I actually tried to do, even though I didn't enjoy it that much. But I actually sat down and I attempted to try and enjoy it and ignore all these things that were niggling in my head and I was thinking, uh, what, what, that doesn't, why, why do they all have the same superpowers? I thought, you know, it, it, they all seem to be like agility, you know, and why is it that somehow all of them seem to be able to take on vision even though he's like this uh, completely OP, overpowered kind of being? Why is it that, you know, I sat there and I still just tried to sit down and take the characters in and enjoy the movie. You guys that are on the other side, the Marvel side, or the Batman fans, and I'm not just saying it's Marvel fans, it's the Batman fans. You sit down and you watch Batman vs Superman and you want to tear it apart, everything, because you're scared of, um, uh, of other DC characters. Uh, um, you know, like the Batman friends are scared of other DC characters because they always want Batman to be the number one DC character and the Marvel fans are scared of all the DC characters because they always want Marvel to be the number one, um, you know, uh, comic book movie making um, uh, company, uh, Disney Marvel. So anyway, the, the, that, that's my side of that, cartoonish as hell. And the difference is, you know, um, if 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 the the Marvel guys had have directed the Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Doomsday um, fight, they would have had Batman. You know, uh, um, because Batman's the most popular character, and you know how they treat Iron Man. Somehow, Iron Man can take out the Hulk for some reason. I don't know how he can take out the Hulk like that, but he can take out the Hulk. You know, so they would have had Batman somehow. You know be able to take down Doomsday and he's got some weird kind of thing where he'll be able to do that. But in the, 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 what Zack Snyder did is he treated the, the action scenes with a certain amount of respect and logic and showed that, okay, there are limitations to Batman. He cannot just take out anyone and do anything he wants the way um, somehow you know, I, I don't know how, but now Iron Man is just so OP. He can take out Hulk. He can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with um, Thor. You know, all of these guys he could do these things with. He's so OP. And so is Captain America, to be quite frank. I didn't know, like, in the comics, Captain America can be holding helicopters. Like, <laughs> he's, holding, he's only supposed to be like a little bit stronger than human beings like a, your average athletic human being he's not supposed to be able to like grab hella he's not like he's not like the hulk or spider-man spider-man's supposed to be stronger than captain america but anyway forget all that that's all that's all nonsense anyway to be talking about that's getting into nerdy stuff and it's nitpicking the way you guys usually do so anyway this that that's the um Whew, uh, first part of my rant. So, uh, we're going to go into uh, three. Depiction of Superman is um, bad. He kills. Um, does he? Now, I, I've not appreciated what Zack Snyder has done with Superman. You, I think I've been very vocal on the fact that I don't uh, really like um, 
Batman. Uh, sorry, I don't. I really don't like Man of Steel. I, th I think it's an awful, awful movie, and I think that's what began this terrible slide into what has been a depiction of Superman, which I'm very, very uncomfortable with. The movie broke my heart many times, as Superman is probably my favourite superhero. I kind of like the Trinity equally. It's hard for me to pick whether Wonder Woman or Superman or Batman. I like them quite equally. But when Superman said, I might have to kill Batman, I might have to kill him, and then said uh, the words... Um, not a, 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 everyone, I can't remember the exact quote, but he says, um, every, eventually everyone turns bad or something, or eventually everyone's corrupted. No, Superman, you're goddamn Superman. You don't say that. And these are the things where the film itself opened itself up to kind of critic. Because you, you want Superman to be the hope of the movie, the... the you know, even if you want it to be realistic, I get that, Zack Snyder, but you want Superman to be kind of hopeful in this movie. So don't think for one moment those who um, have issue or take issue with this movie, I don't see some of what you're saying. I see a lot of what you're saying with Batman v Superman, much more than I do with Suicide Squad. Um, so the, the depiction of Superman is bad. I want to say one thing, though, about the, the, the bit where he supposedly kills a guy in, um, in Batman v Superman. Now, he says in the next scene that he didn't kill anyone there. I don't know if he says he's not killing the terrorists or if he says he didn't kill anybody there. But I feel from that scene that we should probably give Superman the benefit of the doubt because what he does is he moves so fast through that wall that I imagine he could have protected and shielded the terrorist um, that he smashes through the wall. Maybe he just wanted to give him a real fright to be like, hey, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll fuck you up if you if if I want to if you're messing with my girl and and he may have smashed with his back through those walls rather than smash the guy face first into uh into those walls uh because I would be very uncomfortable if Superman really did just smash the guy through the wall I've never known I'd like to ask Zach what his interpretation of that scene was um so on number three. I'm with fans and critics. I do not enjoy the depiction of Superman. But what I would say is that does not make this a bad movie. Just because the Superman in this movie is not the ideal Superman that I want, I am not going to criticise the film on what I wanted it to be I'm going to be critical and review the film on what it was trying to be itself. And I believe that what this was trying to do was a deconstruction of Superman, of the, the, the kind of perfectness of this character, that he could be this beacon of goodness um, in, in the world. They were trying to show a flawed uh, a man with, with a great deal of power, um, and the struggles that he would have to go through. So, um, in terms of the depiction of Superman, I think um, it served the film that Zack Snyder was trying to make. So, I, I'm not too difficult on that, even though it's not my Superman, and I would have preferred a slightly more heroic Superman. So, I, I, I'll give you guys that. Uh, the Superman was not the greatest. Uh, too many characters in the movie. Um, I don't think there were too many characters. I followed the characters quite um, uh, through, uh, th uh, easily. I followed the story arcs quite e easily, even in the theatrical version. I think it's nitpicking again by the critics. I don't see the real problem. How were there too many characters? It was Batman, it was Superman... A few cameos here and there, Wonder Woman cameo, Wonder Woman was brilliant, 
badass, really enjoyed every moment she was on screen. What's with the too many characters? Explain to me. Um, number five, Lex Luthor. Bad casting. So yeah, Lex Luthor, <clears throat> Lex Luthor's cast as um, Jesse Eisenberg, everyone thinks that's bad. Everyone thinks the casting was bad, that he was a terrible Lex Luthor, that he was the worst part of the movie, etc, etc. Now, let me give you a little preamble. As I told you, I was, I was ready to trash. I was so incensed by the time I went into Batman v Superman. By the time I purchased my ticket to go into Batman v Superman. I wasn't even going to go to Batman v Superman, the movie. I wasn't going to go and watch it until they announced that Wonder Woman was in it. And then I was like, okay, now I've got to support this movie because if I don't support this movie, they might say, oh, it's maybe because it's Wonder Woman, wasn't it? Maybe because people responded to Wonder Woman. You know, I didn't want it to be one of those things, so I had to go and support my girl. But anyway, um, as anything with Wonder Woman in uh, till the end of time, until even if the movie's bad, like the next Wonder Woman movie's bad, I'm still going to go watch it because I need them to know that even if it's bad, it's not because there isn't Wonder Woman fans out there. It's because the, their movie was bad. That you know, um, the, the, Wonder Woman's awesome. Anyway, but put it this way: when I found out that Ben Affleck was cast as Batman, I went on a rampage online. I said, you've, you've got to see some of it. I went on like it was rants hatred um you know um uh, th there was vitriol real vitriol in these kind of rants that i went on um and i felt sick i couldn't sleep i could not i could not think at the time of a worst casting it was like to me ben affleck was like george clooney without any charisma <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of George Clooney, but I can at least watch his movies. I, did, I didn't like Ben Affleck. I mean, I didn't like the guy as an actor. I thought he was a, a, a wonderful human being, but I thought he was a very, very uh, vanilla as an actor. Uh, I, I didn't think he was going to do a great job, and I thought he was going to rob us of a great new interpretation of Batman which could have come from a superior actor who may have taken a few more chances. Okay. And I'm going to say something about Batman as well, because I, I, I hear all this stuff that Batman is, or the Batfleck, um, um, you know, Ben Affleck is the best Batman ever. Um, and I, I, I really, really strongly disagree. But I, I think he was really good in this movie great in this movie but best batman come on guys calm down a bit uh, on that shit uh you know everything new is the best nowadays i don't know why like everything new that comes like civil war it's the greatest comic book movie of all time and then by the time the next one comes out they'll start dissing civil war and saying oh it was all crap and, and it's you know like this that and the other and they didn't quite nail spider-man you know every time something new comes out in this generation, they start trying to make their um, new thing the best one ever. No, 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 Ben Affleck is not the best Batman. Straight up. <laughs> he ain't got the capability, but he did surprise me. He shocked me a lot at how good he was. Um, so, I just thought I couldn't be more offended anyway. This is the narrative. I thought that, that you know, ugh. and then they announced Gal Gadot as, um, as Wonder Woman. And I was like, I, I, I was so tired. I was so um, dispassionate by then. I was so 
off this movie because I, I already knew Wonder Woman was in it, right? But they cast Gal Gadot and I, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, give her a chance, who cares? You know, <laughs> it really was like Ben Affleck's Batman. I mean, you as all well, like, whatever, you know, because I just didn't think there was anything else. And also, you know, I, I, I was really against all this kind of um, uh, body shaming that people were doing against her. I thought it was pretty uh, juvenile. Well, she doesn't have big enough titties to, to, to play Wonder Woman. And that's so against the bloody character anyway, for all those people who were saying that. That's so against the message of the character. Like, Wonder Woman would be, like, uh, ashamed of, like, fans who would say, like, if she was real, of course she isn't. Um, is she? <laughs> but, um, you know, all that body shaming. So I kind of came to support Gal Gadot a bit, even though I was like, maybe you could have found, like, an actress who'd done more than the Furious Fast Five. You you know, you can't give her something, you know, to, a bit lesser so to actually see, test her out. Can she carry her own movie? I was worried about the acting, her acting. I was not worried about her body type. I thought she could beef up with the the uh, the, the John Jones or whatever they, they do, or, or Jim Jones um, thing that they do um, that... that, that uh, routine that um, Ben Affleck and and and, and um, Henry Cavill went on to beef up for the for the roles as um, Superman and Batman respectively. Um, but anyway, um, so that that's the narrative so far, right? So I'm I'm, I'm kind of a really um, thinking. Uh, that sorry about that. I, I I'm really thinking that I can't I can't hate on the. I, there wasn't enough hate within me to get any more angry at this movie. And then I woke up one day, and the news was because you know, and I knew it wasn't a joke this time. I knew it wasn't a joke. I'd heard things that, you know, that, that they said uh, that Jacqueline Phoenix might be playing Lex Luthor. And I was like, oh, cool, Jacqueline Phoenix. Because Lex Luthor being the bad guy, the, the main bad guy of Superman, who's one of my favourite superheroes. So he's really, really one of my favourite villains. And I thought, whoa, whacking Phoenix, especially the way he played the, the bad guy in Gladiator. I could really see that. That would be incredible uh, to see that. Um, you know, his take on Lex Luthor and what he did. There's this other movie he did, um, uh, The Master, and where he just freaked out. He was just like some crazy guy, like complete psychotic. And he, he just, what a performance, you know, he was nuts. And I just thought, wow, if he took on Lex Luthor, he could do something that we had never seen before of the character. And I still wish they had have cast him as Lex Luthor, but like... They, they should have given him anything he wanted to play Lex Luthor. I think that would have been money very, very well spent and nobody would be complaining now. But instead I wake up and I find out Jesse Eisenberg has been cast as Lex Luthor. And I'm like, the social network guy? What, just because he played a billionaire before? And I knew it wasn't a joke because when, as I said, when Ben Affleck got uh, cast, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is a joke. Like, it took me a whole two hours to finally believe that, that it was real news. I, I kept searching for where they were saying, oh, it's, it's a prank when it was Ben Affleck. But now I was like, okay, anything can happen. And when I saw, you know, um, Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Luthor, uh, it's not whacking Phoenix. It's 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 Jesse Jesse Eisenberg, Zombie Land Jesse Eisenberg. Of all the people, and it wasn't. And and I remember at the time people kept saying, "Oh, but he looks so young." And and I I I thought, what a cool idea when 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 uh, it was it was suggested by um, uh, Zack Snyder. Even though I thought Zack Snyder couldn't pull off these great ideas that he always has. But I thought, what a cool idea to have a young Lex Luthor. Like a Lex Luthor who is one of these um, 
kind of like young Harvard um, kind of um, Silicon Valley, um, uh, you know, billionaires made it by himself because he's just such a genius. Um, and then he finds, you know, that that's a really, really interesting take on Lex Luthor. Um, and so I had no problem with a young Lex Luthor, but Jesse Eisenberg, I just, I was, I was like, wow, they managed to do it. This makes Ben Affleck's casting as Batman look bloody genius. I was like, awful. So by the time, and I was so, um, taken away by, by vehement hatred of this idea of Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Once again, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> as, as Edward Norton said. Yes, once again, I couldn't sleep. Um, and um, I just, you know, I was like, okay, the, the, this is the, um, I, I, when this movie comes out, I'm going to tear it apart. I'm going to, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to come back and I'm going to rip it to shreds. I knew everything about this movie was going to be awful, dreadful, the worst thing I'd ever see. And I thought that this casting was perhaps going to be the worst thing of all. And then I went um, to the cinema after I couldn't sleep for months. <laughs> and, you know, I was so depressed I couldn't even make a video when, 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 when they announced it. You know, I couldn't sleep, <laughs> as I said. Um, and then I went to the cinema, ready to see this awful abomination of a performance um, that I was, you know, from, from Ben Affleck and from, um, uh, and f I, I was pretty sure Ben Affleck was going to be pretty average. Like he's just, you know, what he always does. He, he's always like serviceable, but he doesn't do anything interesting. Um, and I was pretty sure that, you know, um, Jesse Eisenberg was going to be Jesse Eisenberg, which I like Jesse Eisenberg, but I just like him being Jesse Eisenberg in those comedies and every once in a while, maybe he can take on a slightly serious role, but he's Jesse Eisenberg. And man, I went to the cinema and I'm watching it and I see the first scene of him and I listen to the writing because the writing of Lex Luthor in this Batman v Superman is absolutely brilliant and I see this guy play Lex Luthor and yeah he's a bit ticky and he's a bit weird and he's a bit but people are saying this guy is not look let me just put it let me put my cards on the table I thought Jesse Eisenberg's performance in Batman v Superman some of his scenes not all together, because some of his scenes, I get what people are saying, a bit too ticky, a bit too weird. But once again, I think people are way over-exaggerating this. And what he pulls off is one of... It, 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 to me, him, him, him and Gal Gadot did the best job in the movie. I think his... His performance as Lex Luthor to me was more interesting than Henry Cavill as Superman, and a little, little bit more interesting, uh, and and more, actually in a weird way, comic accurate. But but this is in the writing, not in the performance. But more comic accurate than um, than 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 uh, Ben Affleck as Batman. I think Lex Luthor, uh, sorry, um, Jesse Eisenberg did an outstanding job as Lex Luthor, especially in some of the key scenes. I think some of the places he was doing his little tick things and little crazy um, things, but I think generally speaking, um, apart from when he went a little bit too manic, he was nailing, and, and, and even more so than his performance was the dialogue. The dialogue of Lex Luthor, that was the most Lex Luthor dialogue I have ever heard in any, um, uh, well, specifically um, in, uh, in this media. I mean, 
Um, Chris Terrio, you are bloody genius. And people will, one day people are going to understand um, just how good what you did was with um, the writing there. The writing there was exceptional. It was absolutely exceptional. I'm going to show you a, 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 a scene, um, you know, the scene on the rooftop. Let's watch this together because I, I just have to break this down because it's that good. My God, that is a brilliant scene. It's so brilliant. I don't even... And then... Oh, these fanboys are so, uh, they so annoy me because they think they know what they're talking about and they know f bloody nothing. Oh, it's too much like the Joker. Oh, he's playing the Riddler. He's not playing Lex Luthor. Let me explain something to you. Lex Luthor is not a thing, okay? Um, neither is the Joker, okay? The Lex Luthor is... There are, there are three things that are true of all Lex Luthers that have come along. He's a genius. He's got a very scientific mind. Um, and um, he hates Superman um, because he's uh, jealous of the fact that um, Superman has this power that um, he hadn't earned. Um, it's just a power... Uh, you know, essentially godly powers that he hadn't earned um, through any effort of his own. It's just uh, given to him as uh, by nature. And as far as Lex Luthor is concerned, that power ought be his. And that power, you know, he knows that if he had that power, he'd be corrupted. So he thinks Superman must be corrupted. That simple. Um... That that is that is that is all that Lex Luthor is. Any way that a writer chooses to depict those three central themes, um, Lex Luthor's feelings towards Superman, which I've just outlined, um, the fact he's a genius and and has a kind of scientific mind. Any way a writer chooses, I I could make, I could I could write a Lex Luthor, who was a seven year old child. He was just a genius, um, so brilliant as a seven-year-old, so way beyond that he's got, he's almost got the mind beyond, you know, um, adults. And then Superman comes along and he, he, he feels that somehow, that you can take Lex Luthor any which way you want. You can make Lex Luthor a woman. The, the, as long as you keep those essential parts of the character. And what, um, they, they've cleverly done here, and I do get it, sometimes he went over the top and it maybe didn't suit the tone of the movie, but I'm going to, but remember this, uh, just a short in-between. If they had have gone with the suave, businessman, thoughtful, stoic Lex Luthor, that you had in the animated series and that you had in Smallville, which is what most of these supposed comic book fans are referring to when they say, oh, I know who Lex Luthor is and I know what he's supposed to be like and he's not supposed to be like that. If they had have done with that, how would you distinguish Lex Luthor from Bruce Wayne? They would have been almost identical. It would have been very, very hard to make uh, that kind of stoic version um, of uh, Lex Luthor um, be so different from the Bruce Wayne you had in this in this movie. It would have, it, they would have been virtually the same character, uh, and the tone tonally it, it would have been um, you know these three boring white guys, you know, like uh, Superman's stoic and, you know, whatever. And then you have Lex Luthor, who's just a little bit of a genius, but still stoic. And the, then you've got Batman, who's damaged and crazy and stoic. You couldn't have had that. 
So you had to have Lex Luthor have a different vibe. And what they did is they went with the birthright Lex Luthor. And I'll show you now, um, they went with the version of Lex Luthor that you find um, in Red Sun. So now you can see what I'm talking about when I say that this was a Lex Luthor that we've seen in comics. You can see from that Red Sun um, clip that this is a version of Lex Luthor that we've seen from the comics. So it does not stray far. It was very, very comic um, related. And I thought was, what was interesting is people say this guy was like the Joker. He was trying to pull off a Heath Ledger like Dark Knight because he was twitching a little bit. People don't understand, um, they actually switched around what, what, what would be expected of these characters. They did a very clever thing with Lex Luthor and the Joker, because they've always been, much like Superman and Batman, two sides of the same coin. So they made um, the Joker in The Dark Knight, they made him a psychopath. Now, there's a distinction between a psychopath and a sociopath. They've made Lex Luthor in this movie a sociopath. Now, with a psychopath, what you have is a person much like if you're familiar with, you know, the, these, the, the, these kind of psychopath serial killers or um, these the, the people who've been diagnosed with um, psychopathy, um, like uh, Bernie, uh, Bernie uh, Madoff, um, you have the kind of sophisticated, uh, or sorry, not sophisticated. You have a, somebody who is charismatic and able to hide um, under a veil, essentially, of sanity and be able to charm people and lead people and manipulate people um, very, very effectively because of how socially adept they are, how um, able to mirror uh, normal people's behavior that they are and how charismatic they are now what um, in the dark knight what um what uh, uh, um, the joker was was almost a you know a a, a, a kind of um, a manson like psychopath um, uh, the the um, Charles Manson was a, was a very, very good example of a psychopath, somebody who was able to lead other people because of his extraordinary charisma, okay, um, and lead them to do savage things um, and convince them of bizarre philosophies and bizarre ideas because he was so, um, you know, uh, he, he, he knew people and was able to read people and profile people and use that kind of against them. Then, the, and, and, and someone like Ted Bundy is very, very similar in that sense. Then there's the other type, which is the sociopath. Now, the sociopath is more, and you can look this up, the sociopath is more like Ed Gaines. Um, this is a guy who stands out. Um... He is, there's something wrong with him, and people know it. You know, they can see it. They may not, um, you know, this is a guy, when he turns around, and you find out that he, um, you know, killed a couple of people, people aren't surprised. They may not have been, been like, oh, yeah, that's definitely, that guy's a killer. But when they find out about it, they're like, uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That guy really did seem like he was screwed up. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the one. You know, and that's what Lex Luthor is in this. Lex Luthor is that type of guy. You know, the senator finds out Lex Luthor is responsible for doing some weird criminal stuff. Um, you know, and... She's like, yeah, yeah, I pretty much figured, <laughs> you know, everyone who finds out about Lex Luthor, even, even the, the, the general who finds out about Lex Luthor, who gives, um, who gives um, uh, uh, Lois Lane uh, the, the, the smoking gun to, to tell, him, tell her that what Lex Luthor has been up to, even he's not surprised that Lex Luthor is, you know, he's that type of person. He's a sociopath. He's so um, 
mentally unstable um, in terms of uh, his behavior that people notice it and they notice that there's something wrong with him they notice his distance away from the rest of humanity but the great thing about this is he's the kind of sociopath who's more like um uh, I, I would put him in the, 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 the kind of same level as the Unibomber. Uh, yeah, the Unibomber, exactly. Um, uh, Ted, Ted, Ted Kaczynski. Um, <coughs> I might put a little clip of him up. This guy was a genius. Brilliant, brilliant genius. Went to um, Berkeley College and um, uh, just was mathematically so gifted, um, but he could not um, make or form relationships with people because he was just such a genius. And it brought him and it distanced him further and further and further away from society. And he started sending out bombs to Berkeley because he felt rejected by them. Um, and, you know, eventually it was his brother who, uh, you know, read some kind of manifesto he sent to a newspaper, and his brother turned him in. He said he read this manifesto. So his own brother wasn't surprised that his, 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 his that, you know, that Ted was a, uh, uh, was a, uh, was this kind of murderer, serial kind of killer guy. His own brother was like, recognized it and was like, yeah, that's probably Ted. That's the kind of sociopath that Lex Luthor is playing. That's the kind of nuance that this, that, 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 um, that, that, um, that Jesse brings to this performance. And he uses all these kind of philosophical musings and references. And, you know, like when he's, I, I love that bit on the roof that we just saw where he just goes, um, you know, you put a, a you, he says something, I'll, I'll show it to you, forget it. Yeah, and he does that, and it's like you can see the wheels turning in his head, but Superman has no idea what he's talking about. What is he talking about? Uh, you send something to you send so, something to Batman, and it's like, um, uh, you killed your family, and blah, blah. But all of that is a brilliant master plan to, to get these guys to, to in the end, um, you know, uh, to, to come into conflict. So this guy is a real, real genius. And when you look at the, 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 the plan that he has, um, even the Granny's Peach Tea, the, when you look at the plan he has, it was very, very Lex Luthor. And I, I mean, as much as I will defend um, Jesse Eisenberg's performance, I do think other people could have done this a little bit better. But I think Jesse Eisenberg... I, I thought he was good. I thought he was very, very good. Um, and he surprised me a hell of a lot, probably more than anybody in this movie. Um, I, the only thing I enjoyed more than him was Wonder Woman. The only thing I enjoyed more than him was Wonder Woman. Um, and I, I liked him because he was the type of villain you really hated. You know, I didn't like this guy. And that's what you're supposed to feel towards Lex Luthor. The Joker's a kind of villain that you like. And I think that's another thing that people are mistaking their feelings towards Jesse Eisenberg with this. Because they're thinking, they feel like, you know, with the Joker, you kind of like him. And with the other DC villains, you kind of like them. And you should kind of want to like Lex Luthor. But Lex Luthor isn't that type of villain. Lex Luthor's just a twat. He is the most superficial, you know, this is a guy who, if he put his mind to it, could cure cancer, um, could, could rob the world of, so, uh, to, uh, rid the world of so many ills and iniquities. You know, he, he, you just saw him when uh, in that Red Sun um, uh, scene where he's just like, oh, here's the thing to balance the budget, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of guy he is and he could do that anytime he wants but instead he's just so obsessed <laughs> with some guy because he's he's the only guy in the world who's superior to him he, this is a petty petty individual uh and and 
you know, um, Jesse Eisenberg made him even more despicably hateable. At least in the comics, he kind of find him a little bit like, <laughs> that's quite cute the way he just hates Superman like that. That's quite funny. Uh, but this, this, this version is like, is he, I straight up did not like him. I had a distaste for him. Every time he came on screen, he made my skin crawl. And I liked it. I like I like that. That is that is a very very different and interesting take on Lex Luthor. And we've got to stop thinking that these comic. But we have to stop with this entitlement. Oh, we have this idea. It's got to be Brian Cranston. If it isn't Brian Cranston, then it's shit. You've got to stop with that entitlement. It's bullshit. You know. Uh, the, Sometimes the, 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 these guys get it wrong. Sometimes they, maybe even this they got wrong. Maybe it's so irritating that people can't deal with um, uh, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. But when you start saying the writing was bad and he was like the Joker and all of this kind of thing, it just makes me feel you don't know what you're talking about. You either haven't read the comics because that is not, even if he was bad, that is not, the Joker. That's nothing like the Joker. Nothing he said is something that the Joker would say. All of it, the references to books like Lolita, the references to Zeno's paradoxes, the references to um, the paradox of evil, um, the, 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 this kind of philosophical, none of it was anything the Joker would say. So if you say that, that makes me think that you, you don't know what you're talking about. So that that's my bit on uh, Lex Luthor and that's a bit of a rant I might have to cut that up a bit and edit it that that up a bit and then um, put it together um, as a separate video as well depending on uh, what I decide to do but let's try and get through the rest of these quite um, quickly now there, there, there's a lot of people who say the the, the Batman v Superman is kind of boring because of the pretentious philosophical musings. I mean, really, dude? Really? Is that... I mean... <sighs> okay, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go on a, out on a, on a kind of, you know, just, just straight out say this. I, I studied philosophy at university and some of the things that came up in this um, film were things that we talk about in philosophy class, that lecturers were writing books on, that, you know, obviously it glossed over them because it's a movie, it can't go into a lecture about it, but essentially these were ideas that have been discussed since, you know, ancient Greek um, philosophers w w were walking around, you know, I, I just... It, 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 it's, it's, it's bizarre to me that you can say it's pretentious. I don't think there's anything pretentious about it. Whether, um, it, 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 whether the question of if God exists and he's, and he's um, all-powerful, how can there be evil in the world? I think that's a rather interesting question. Um, the fact that they don't try and answer it because no one can answer it, you know, I, I, those kind of questions that come up in the movie are absolutely fine. They're, they're thought provoking and they're interesting. And uh, they were thrown into the movie sparsely and at the right times. And um, I, I, and I think, uh, as again, uh, uh, hats off to the writer, the way they um, wrote Lex Luthor because he was philosophical, he was demented, he was evil, and he was, uh, and he was always kind of throwing some kind of theological kind of ideas into um, the, 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 the general narrative that I thought were, were, were very fun and interesting, and he did it in a funny way, and it was clever. So the, philosoph the philosophical side of it, I thought was very interesting, I thought, that was a, a good on them. Brave move, brave move. And um, cinema audiences should have been happy that a big blockbuster movie like that, Batman v Superman itself, was actually attempting in some way to make you think. You'd think that you'd appreciate that, I don't know, whatever. Um, dream sequences, too many. 
Uh, yeah, I agree with this. Um, I, I believe the dream sequences should have been saved um, for the uh, for the for the ultimate cut um, because that was really really for the fans. Um, it didn't add to the narrative. Um, I think they should have. I think they should have. I mean, with the dawn of justice thing. Would the Trinity fight have been enough at the end to symbolise Dawn of Justice? Or would they have to have had, like, they could have just put one more cameo in, I don't know, uh, Victor Stone playing at the football um, game could have done it, but, like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, the, the, um, the, the dream sequences for, because as I told you, I fell asleep. And the second time I watched the movie in the cinema and I tried to watch it with the trailers and everything, I fell asleep. It was too goddamn long and something had to go and I can't think of anything. You know, I'm sure he was so proud of direct because it was a beautiful sequence, um, all of that stuff in the desert and he probably really didn't want to take it out. But to me, the film would have been more coherent um, if he had have added in all that stuff of um, Superman trying to find out about Batman um, and I had have added that stuff of um, the stuff in the desert before to flesh out um, Lex Luthor's plan and all of that if you take out every kind of dream sequence in the movie um, you could have had that and you could have had a much more linear uh, movie uh, and I think it would have been a better experience, personally. I think it would have been. A, I, I think that would have been a bet. I think that would be the best version of the movie. Take out the dream sequences, put those in instead. But having said that, I think the dream sequence was very beautiful and very beautifully shot. Maybe you could have had it as a as a short movie or something like that before, like um, you know, put it in the cinema as like a trailer, like a really really long kind of trailer for Batman v Superman I think like as a short film that would have worked really really well and then added it to the ultimate cut the way he wanted it after but those dream sequences man I'm sure that it, like I know about Dark Side, I know about all of that kind of stuff I'm sure it had the audience baffled <laughs> um, I think they could have left in the bit with um with uh, the flash coming through the, the the portal, though, I think that could have been left in, and maybe done something a little bit shorter with the dream sequence. I don't know, but anyway, th that's that's my fear on the view on the dream sequence. So as as I said, you can see I am being fair. Where I see problems with the movie, I am being fair. So I'm not just like fanboying out and and uh, and giving excuse after excuse for everything in the movie. Okay, the Martha scene. Um, now, this is one of the things. I'm going to say two things about the um, Martha scene. Now, there's two aspects to this. Now, um, one we've got people who mock this scene and they mock the very, very idea of it. I'm not going to go over again um, because it's so bloody obvious. I think only someone who is wanting to hate this movie is 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 bl or, or just is stupid. I I don't know. You either want to hate this movie and you want to troll and you want to pile on because if you don't understand this, especially people who say they're Batman fans. If you don't understand this scene and why Batman um, decides after hearing um, Superman say, save Martha, save Martha. If you don't understand that scene as a Batman fan, and I'm not even like the biggest Batman fan. Like I, I, I he's one of my, he's, he's, as I said, apart from he's, of the Trinity, he's probably the least favorite of the trinity of mine if i were really really to look at it I, I like superman wonder woman batman as my favorite superheroes but he's probably just slightly the least but even so um i'm not a huge comic reader of 
all of them, you know. I haven't read every single kind of incarnation of like Wonder Woman and, and, and Superman and Batman. I've, I've read quite a bit, but you know, I, I, there are fans who are like crazy over Batman. They've read like everything. And they're saying, oh, well, I've got a marvelous scene, I don't understand. Or they claim to have read everything. I don't know if they actually have. Now, to me, I'm just like, it, it's, it, it's very, very clear and obvious what the Martha scene is trying to do. Now, this is the second bit of this. I think it's very, very poorly executed. And I'm going to explain why it's poorly executed. Okay, so, so the first thing is, first thing is, clearly we all know, stop trolling Stop pretending you don't understand. Even if you didn't understand it while you were watching the movie, stop being so stubborn. You know exactly why the Martha scene, in terms of um, Batman stopping the fight because of the, uh, you know, of what Superman said in that particular moment, you know exactly why that makes sense. The film sets it up perfectly in the beginning, even though I didn't want to see. Another scene of Batman's parents being killed, and I thought that that scene in the beginning where Batman's parents are killed is so ridiculous. And what a redundant use of two great actors as well, um, just to play uh, uh, Martha and 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 and, um, uh, and Thomas Wayne and get shot just like that. What a waste of um, that actor, you know. Um, unless they're going to do a storyline where Thomas Wayne in an alternate um, world becomes uh, the Batman and she becomes the Joker, like in the Flashpoint Paradox. What a complete waste of those two actors to do the, just a little vignette of getting shot. Like, I'm not even going to get angry about that. But anyway, they, but they set it up. You know, the last thing he hears after, um, you know, his parents get shot is, um, you know, Martha. You know, the father saying Martha. And, and we all know that Batman, ultimately, if he could go back and do something about it so his parents don't get shot and he doesn't have to become Batman and he doesn't go into become this, um, you know, vengeful, uh, you know, uh, vengeful kind of um, Avenger of the night. Um, he would go back and, you know, erase all of that and just live happily with his parents. He, he regrets that he wasn't able to do anything, and that's why he's put on the bat. And, and, and everyone knows this. I don't even know why I'm saying all of these words, because you know it. You know it, you know it, you know it. And you know that that is the reason, and you're just being stubborn because you didn't, maybe you didn't get it in the time in the cinema and now you get it, but you don't want to admit you're wrong. You're wrong, it makes complete sense why Batman turned on it. Now, was it effectively, and why Batman stopped the fight? Now, was it effectively done as a scene? No. No, it was not effectively done as a scene. Too many dumb things about it. Why would Superman call his mother Martha? It, uh, who could, like he loves his mother he's got such a good touching relationship with with his mother why is he calling his mother Martha it makes no sense um, so it save Mar I mean that's just another Zack Snyder thing he just does these Zack Snydery things and it's so annoying because he could make it perfectly fine and it all makes sense but he just Snyders it um, so I, I, you can see now I'm not a massive fan of Snyder's, you know, oversights in filmmaking. So, again, I'm being fair. I just think this film is, all in all, really, really great in some areas. Really great and much, much more interesting filmmaking than Civil War. Okay? So... Um, the Martha, because you can talk about this. No one can talk about Civil War the way I'm talking about um, Batman v Superman. No one can talk about because it didn't. Th there's nothing of interest in it. There's nothing that bad, and there's nothing that good. It's just there. You can't analyze it. There's nothing to analyze. You can analyze this movie. It's because it's interesting and it has interesting themes and it has interesting 
decisions that it decides to make um, that are that are most often um, uh, controversial and challenging to the to to the viewer. You couldn't do this about civil war because it just it, it doesn't warrant that kind of analysis, and that's the difference between this film and and, and civil war. Um, just to put a button on what I'm trying to say, but anyway, um, where were we? Uh, the Martha scene. We all know why it works, and as I said, but there's things about it. That don't now. The problem is, I can see why he said "save Martha" rather than "save my mother." I mean, yeah, it could have been "save my mother" in the script, but if it was "save my mother" in the script, um, and Batman kind of was like, "What do you mean, mother?" It wouldn't have had that impact. It wouldn't have had that impact. That I mean, maybe. If Maybe if um, Pa Kent was still alive and he said, save my parents, then it could have, you know, you're killing my parents, you know. But again, you're killing Martha has just that, as a line, it has a really striking power. Now, I would have thought the really, really best way to have gone about this was rather than all in the ultimate cut this happens, Rather than all of that time where Clark Kent is investigating the Batman, um, him, you know, that all of those scenes served to do was make Batman look like more of a badass. They didn't serve anything really significant in the movie. They didn't really tell you too much more about Clark Kent. He didn't get so many more lines. All his lines were kind of like, they didn't, all his lines didn't tell you anything about him. They just were like other people either speaking to him and telling him about Batman. Or it was, you know, they, they just didn't say much about him. So if he had have used that time to investigate Batman, and then when he heard and figured out Batman was Bruce Wayne, somehow he stumbled across the tragedy that had happened to Bruce Wayne, and he found out about the mother being called Martha. And then that's why at the end of the fight, Superman actually technically would have won the fight by using his brains. Because he actually psychologically does it on purpose. Saying, save Martha, knowing that how that was going to affect Batman. Now that would have been good storytelling. That would have been A, B, C. So they could have used that time to set up something to make, um, you know, Superman look like he's not just this big, tough, powerful guy, but he's actually got some kind of character and brains to him. And I think that would have been a really, really good way to go because Superman in the comics is not just some idiot. He's a guy who's, you know, he's got a lot of great power, but he's got a, he's got a mind behind him as well. Um, and that it was the same thing, you know, when they just blow up the, the Senate. That's another terrible Snyder mistake. Stay with the moment just for a, a single moment. That could have been a Superman speech. Take out those dream sequences. Put in a Superman speech where he defends himself to humanity. So, th th again, I'm trying to be very, very fair to this movie, but again... You know, the, 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 the big point here is, despite all this, the, the, there's great, great things about this movie, as, I, as I've, I've pointed out. Batman Kills, another deconstruction of a character. Um, now, Batman killing in this movie is jarring. It, 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 I think it doesn't really... Um, you know, the sense of it is, is, is kind of strange because here's this guy who's, who cares about, you know, Superman um, killing all these people in this fight where he was trying to actually save the world and he's killing himself. So again, I, I really, 
I don't know how to defend the Batman killing. I honestly don't. And it's not because that I don't think Batman should be able to kill in movies. But in this specific movie, it, 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 it can't be justifiable because once Batman kills, then it takes away from his motivation to want to fight that uh, Superman who he thought had done all this great destruction and killed so many people. So again, although I like the idea of this is an old Batman who's gone over the edge and has become more ruthless, um, as soon as he crosses that line, he as a person who has no uh, credibility in criticizing Superman. However, was it so bad him killing that I stopped enjoying the movie? No. So, again, I'm, I'm going to say I agree with guys who say Batman shouldn't have killed. It's, uh, I, I don't think Batman should have killed considering the story they were trying to tell. But it wasn't so jarring and I enjoyed most aspects of the Batman character. I loved what they did in terms of making Bruce Wayne a bit more like James Bond. I'd never seen that before. I think Ben Affleck, for the most part, you know, um, although he didn't do anything, and this is what I was going to say, like this scene alone from, um, I'm going to show you a scene now, because I was setting this up. Ain't no way Ben Affleck's better than, than, than Christian Bale. I don't even think he's better than Michael Keaton. I think he's about on par with not Michael Keaton. Um, although Michael Keaton didn't get to show off a lot of his range. But there are scenes that... There was not one scene that wasn't, you know, fight choreography in Batman v Superman that impressed me so much about this new Batman. All the scenes that are impressed me about this new Batman were all fight choreography or some other kind of like when he crawled up into the corner um, like as if he was a bat, you know, or uh, when Bruce Wayne was flying on the, you know, as a child, he, he'd fallen down the well and he's flying on the wings of the bat. All of the stuff about Batman that I liked uh, was the kind of, you know, the, the, the visual uh, and the, the, the fight choreography Ben Affleck's kind of was serviceable as the kind of vessel that that kind of the the face of this the, the, this these great visual and and fight spectacles that Batman was in, um, but yeah, like I mean, the the, the subtlety and nuance of um, uh, of uh, Christian Bale in Batman Begins, no way. It blows. It blows um, uh, Ben Affleck out the water. And just look at this scene. Sorry, you're trying to tell me. You're trying to tell me. The nerd man. On with enough prep time. And you don't even have their class. <laughs> no, you're trying to tell me that that. That, that Ben Affleck did anything like that as a scene in, ba in, in Batman v Superman. It, what Christian Bale did there was just, he took us through so many different aspects and sides of the Batman and Bruce Wayne character that, you know, this new James Bond Batman is cool and everything. But, uh, you know, essentially, the, the, the acting is, it, it, it's Ben Affleck's best acting. But Ben Affleck's best acting is, it, it's average, dude. I don't know what to say. It's above average. Like, Ben Affleck's best acting, on his, if he's giving everything, he's got 170%. He still isn't as good as certain actors like like Christian Bale or you know Caprio or any of those guys. He just still isn't as good as them. I'm sorry, uh, that's just how I feel. And um, so the intro of the Justice League is the last thing that I'm going to talk about. So I was very impressed by Ben Affleck, by the way. Don't get me wrong; he was really, really good. 
intro to the Justice League um, and the film is overstuffed with characters. This is the last critique um, of the movie. Um, so uh, that 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 I found has been a, a general critique of um, Batman v Superman. What can I say about the intro of the Justice League? I mean, what 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 the hell do you want anyway? How did that ruin the movie for you? They were they introduced the Justice League on a on a, a on a video because that's what you know Lex Luthor had. He he had gone. I thought it was realistic. That's what I thought. I thought actually, you know, that's kind of actually generally realistic. That's how, rather than have some kind of weird, like, spectacular thing where they bump into the Flash, maybe they could have made a, a cool post credit scene with the Flash instead of doing those videos and then just taken that scene out. Um, but generally speaking, um, it, it didn't bother me. It does, It wasn't. What, it wasn't a scene that I thought was good. It wasn't a scene that I thought was bad. I didn't see how it could be, how people could hate it so much that they're gonna bring it up like, oh, this movie was overstuffed with characters because they 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 did these files. Oh, you won't believe how they introduced the Flash. It was just on a file and a Who cares? I mean, who cares? It was such a little part of the film. So no you know, whatever. And Doomsday and the Death of Superman. Now, this is a major problem I have with the movie. Now, I got why he did it. Ballsy as hell. Really, really ballsy. But in in hindsight, after thinking about it for quite a while, it was, it was very, very silly and short-sighted of them to kill Superman in this movie. Very, very bad idea. Especially if you're going to take away Clark Kent as well. I, I think the way the, the creature looked, they could have just reshot like certain things and just said that was Parasite instead. And nobody would have even minded because that's kind of like what Parasite looks like. <laughs> um, they could have got Scoot McNary and just like thrown him into that stuff um, on the Kryptonian ship and, 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 and mixed him with Zod and and Lex and just created, uh, you know, uh, Parasite instead. Um, and that would have been more than enough to take on, uh, you know, uh, Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. Um, uh, terrible idea to kill off Superman because they've killed up Superman and Clark Kent and we all know Superman's going to come back. But how are people going to buy the Clark Kent secret identity or are we not going to have Clark Kent anymore? It's just going to be Superman. There's no Clark Kent in this world anymore. Then you take, you rip away the humanity of Superman. When he gets his solo movie, Clark Kent is the heart of Superman. You know, um, so I thought that was a really, really bad idea. So, um, um, then I'm just going to say this last thing is literally the five things that I think um, I, I really love about this movie and why I think it's, you know, it, it, in my personal opinion, it's a flawed but great movie. And a re again, my thing isn't with the critics that it's just how much they love, that they've taken joy, that they've, they, they've, they've really, you know, like bullies, just like just taking such great um, happiness in ripping apart these DC movies um, instead of constructively criticizing them. They've just, you know, and, um, you know, to me, the, the, the thing about this movie, literally, um, was it was such a ballsy move. I told you it was like a DC graphic novel brought to life. Um, the editing added to that. Um, and... Uh, you know, why aren't critics saying this? You know, why aren't critics saying, well, hey, you know, what, for all the, as much as I may have not really liked this movie, it's very ballsy for a summer blockbuster to, 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 uh, to, to play with all these themes that it had, like all these theological themes and to have no jokes and to take itself a little bit more seriously and to have this kind of great action 
and to have um, these amazing visuals. Uh, uh, as a summer movie, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty out there. And, you know, just imagine that even if this wasn't, wasn't the one for you, just imagine if he had got it right using all of this, all of the stuff he wanted to do, the philosophical aspect, the visual aspect, all of that stuff. If he had got it right, we would be talking about the best, one of the best movies of all time. Because visually, and what it was trying to do, was so fascinating. And we should encourage that as, as, as movie goes, rather than going back to the, oh, let's all make the jokes, and uh, oh, ha, ha, Aquaman, I hear you talk to fish. We don't, we shouldn't want that. That's great for Marvel. And, uh, you know, as I said, I enjoy that the kids enjoy that and they can go and watch that with their parents and all of that. But how about some comic book movies for people, you know, who are above seven years old and aren't mums, soccer mums, or like, you know, let's have for movies for, for, for young guys, for, for, you know, guys in their... In, in their teens and, 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 and who are a bit more kind of, um, you know, uh, mature or going through a little bit more, have a little more edge or grit to them. How about some movies for them? You know, I, I, I just think it's, it's very uh, short-sighted us criticising a movie on being too dark. Batfleck. Um, as I said, not my favourite Batman. These are the five things I'm saying. Number two, Batfleck. Not my favourite Batman of all time, but great action, um, coherent action. You know, this isn't a Batman who would, uh, like I said, like Black Widow, who's going to try and fight Doomsday in a one-on-one -on -one fight and somehow come out as the victor, like, you know, um, Iron Man does with the Hulk when we all know the Hulk, the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. So no Hulk buster should be able to just knock him out. It's stupid. But anyway, um, number three, Wonder Fucking Woman. And once again, as I said, diversity. Um, the, the, the immediately, right off the bat, you've got, you've got Cyborg, you've got the Suicide Squad with lots of ethnic characters. You've got Wonder Woman, Wonder fucking Woman, because she was an amazing Gal Gadot in this movie. Every moment she was on, she was the most comic accurate character in this movie, um, even more so than Lex Luthor. Uh, uh, and uh, just amazing. Um, amazing. The whole cast was amazing. The whole cast elevated the movie, I think. There was Alfred. Holly Hunter hasn't been mentioned ever, and poor woman. She did a great job in this movie. Um, Perry White. Uh, Lois Lane was very interesting in this movie. Much better than she was in, um, in, in, uh, in Man of Steel. Where it didn't even make sense why she was in that movie at all. Um, Lex Luthor and the, his PhD was fantastic. As I've told you before. Great, great writing with Lex Luthor. Um, if look up some of the references he makes in the movie, it's very, very interesting. And he has an incredibly sinister plot. And he was, lit he was literally up until Amanda Waller came, my favourite villain of um, uh, in a comic book movie of the year. And I thought, I still think this Lex Luthor. Unfortunately, people don't like his performance, and I can understand that. I can understand why, because of the twitching sometimes. I think they're exaggerating a little, but I can understand um, that they maybe were looking for something else. So I wouldn't say in the same vein as Amanda Waller that he's one of the, he's, he's the, the, one of the top 10, say, villains in a comic book movie, but I'd certainly put him in the top 15. Anyway, um, Stunning cinematography is number four. I thought it was absolutely stunning, the cinematography, um, as you know. And the mythology and philosophy was brilliant, subtle, and the story was not spoon-fed to us. This was a ballsy movie that was either great or had some fantastic ideas in it. Either way you look at it, um, it as I said, if you didn't like it and you're a critic, you've got 
you've got to at least see that this guy was trying to make a, an important film, an important film that if it had have worked, would have, would have changed the face of how um, people make comic book movies today. Really, if this had made a, over a billion and, and something, you would have seen Marvel start trying to be a bit more darker and take their characters a little more seriously. They would have maybe gone through their Captain America, um, you know, portfolio, like um, back uh, list of um, comic books and looked for some maybe edgier material for him since uh, um, Winter Soldier worked so well as well. So again, you know, um, this, this was a great, great, great piece of film um, making. And I think it's, again, it's going to be a cult classic. Going to be a cult classic, probably not on the same level as Suicide Squad, but it will be a cult classic, I can assure you. And I'd like to thank you for listening to uh, me um, on uh, Batman v Superman. And um, the last uh, video I'm going to do is why I think Civil War is vastly, vastly overrated. Vastly.